Hi, everyone. Welcome to Downtime in the Ring. This week, we are honored. We are graced with someone <laughs> who has also been part of a wrestling TV documentary. But this time, it's not wrestlers on Netflix. It's actually Monster Factory on Apple TV. We have Gabby Ortiz this week. Hi. I am really excited. Like, I love the Monster Factory so much. And then getting to actually witness what you guys go through. Um, I can only imagine how tough the training is or how intense it is, especially with the history of the monster factory. Yeah. How is it? How really, how was it, you know, starting out in the monster factory overall? I uh, went really very quickly after high school and uh, I don't know if you can believe it or not, but theater training, which is what I did in high school is very very intense and it's very physical and we had um we had these classes called movement classes but it was basically boot camp so i i went into and we also had a really strict uh and critical uh theater teacher so when i went to the monster factory it didn't feel as far off as you would think in terms of my like prior training uh, but it was just more men and less gay people. That's surprising. It's professional <laughs> wrestling. You wouldn't think that. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it, it's it's very. It was a very similar kind of training and kind of like, you know, I was used to the to the criticisms and the critiques that I would get. Like it just that's why I lasted as long as I did without having um, formal athletic training, um, because I was just I was already used to that kind of like pressure cooker environment of like of training and and performing and and all that stuff. I was going to say, what made you want to do it? Because nobody, really, it's rare for anybody to want to step into a ring and um, take chops, take bumps. Bumps mm -hmm. don't feel good. Running the ropes doesn't feel good. So what made you go, hey, I want to try that? I, it was, you know, professional wrestling was just a part of my life for my whole life. It's something that my dad, my brother, uh, that they just always watched and it was always on. And there was a while that, like, I was really into it as a kid, and then I fell off and got into music and theater and art. And when I was um, out of high school and music, theater, and art weren't at the forefront of my life anymore, uh, I, I needed a creative outlet in some way or another. And I found professional wrestling. I've just, like, I watched it again with my dad as, as a grown-up, as, as, like, an older teen. And I was like, you know what? This is more than I remember it being. You know, I just remember, you know, sweaty dudes, you know, just slapping their, you know, slapping each other all the time. And I'm just like, I just, and then I saw what it really was, which is there's, you know, music, there's lighting, there's costumes, there's characters, there's story, there's script, um, plus the athletic side of it too, which is something I've always wanted to get into because I wasn't athletic and I loved sports, I loved baseball, football, all that. So I'm like, um, I never played this stuff. I never really, I can do something I've always wanted to do, plus something I'm already really good at. So it just seemed kind of like a perfect, like, marriage of those two things, of, of a dream of mine, which is to be, like, an in-shape athlete, and then also continue to be an actor and a performer like I always was. And so you decided to go to one of the most intense <laughs> wrestling schools to do this. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I went to the most intense um, theater program in the city, so it made sense. Oh, okay. It wasn't You're really, just... yeah, like I just, I, I need to, I, I, when I want to learn something, I want to learn it very fast and efficiently. 
So it has to be intense. <laughs> That's crazy. And especially with like different conglomerates of like, let's like you said, fashion, music, yeah. uh, just like the media side of everything that Danny taught you as far mm -hmm. as like, even with uh, people with cameras running around capturing everything and Danny's yeah. not even holding back um, from uh, the Sean Ross app and the Sean Ross interview, I believe you guys did. Or Sam Roberts, Sam Roberts. Sam Roberts, uh, yeah. It was uh, crazy to see that, like, he doesn't, he, there wasn't a, like, a, an Apple TV mode and a um, trainer mode. It was, it's what you see is what you get. And it's insane to, like, go through all that. Like, was there any trouble at any point during filming of the Apple TV show that, like, he was like, hey, like, chill out? Was there that, was that line ever crossed or presented to you in any way? It, it, it never was crossed with Danny, but it was crossed with a guest that we had. Um, so none of that footage was on the show. Um, so that that's neither here nor there, but uh, it was never crossed with Danny. In fact, as intense as it looked, filming ended up being probably the easiest training I've ever done at the factory because there was so much starting and stopping. It's still a show. They still have to get mm -hmm. certain shots and stuff. So there was so much start, uh, you know, stop and go and... Um, that's not really the case when there isn't cameras there. When there isn't cameras there, we're just we're just working, you know, we're just we're doing drills, we're doing this, we're doing that. So there's times when like I would be in the ring doing a drill and I'd have to do it a couple of times. I'd have to slow it down. And then, you know, Goldie would have to go in and do the same thing, or Bobby, like kind of like the principal characters. So um for the mo for for a lot of it, it ended up being like kind of a slower like it ended up being slower than than our normal training, which I don't know if you can believe that, but it but it did, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So it was kind of like a nice little break. <laughs> it felt oh. like a break, even though it was it absolutely wasn't a break. It just felt sort of like a less intense kind of you know training than than I was used to. I'm sure all the newer kids when the because a lot of kids came in right when we started filming. So and I was just looking at them like they're gonna be in a in for a rude awakening when this <laughs> a roller coaster when these ride. Cameras are out of yeah. here. <laughs> Does it ever feel like annoying that people just mostly associate you with that TV show? There's also something else that people associate I you with. I thought you were gonna say. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you about that later. But does it feel annoying that this is what you're associated with? You know, um, even in the TV show, you talk about how, you know, it, it did break your heart a little bit that you weren't the first female signed. I know that might hurt, but also look at all the amazing things you've gotten to do. Yeah. Like, is that really a goal? I know to be the first woman, but does it still hurt? Because you've no. done a lot of amazing things since. No, it doesn't hurt anymore. It's um, I'm actually... It's there was a reason that I didn't get signed. There was a reason that I wasn't put in NXT or, you know, or AEW when they, you know, um, because I, I learned that I'm so capable on my own without, you know, a network backing me up or like a, a big promotion backing me up that I can like make a living and do what I need to do as a performer in the places that I want to perform with the people I want to perform with that I want to wrestle. I keep saying perform, but that I want to wrestle. Um, there was no one, I'm not answering to anybody. Even when the show was filming, I wasn't answering to them. They were answering to me. I was like, when I want to, I film on my terms, like, um, and I wouldn't have been able to do this incredible show if I had been at NXT, like Mimi, for example, she left very quick, very soon after we started filming so she didn't get to experience a lot of the filming that we did that i'm so grateful that we got to do because i'm friends with the producers still like i i got closer with you know my coach i got i met i met someone like that i you know while i was filming when that that i really care someone i really care for so it's yeah i just uh i'm 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 actually at times I think about it, I'm like, man, what what would I have done if I got signed? Like, what would my life look like? And I like the way my life is right now. Yeah, and even, like, doing, like, some research and stuff, you hit your five-year goal that you had posted on Twitter from 2022 yeah. was buy your dad's house, buy you a house. What were, what were the other? So it was buy me and my dad a house, buy myself a car, and buy my dad a car. Okay, yeah, I and so... <laughs> yeah, even before 2025 is what you had said it to yourself. So now to follow up, what what's 
have you replaced those goals for your next five-year plan now that you've reached those? So everything on my five-year plan wasn't quite hit yet, but mm. um, so I've, I've worked with WWE in the past. I've worked with AEW, never worked with Impact. So I want to hit them up too. NWA, I want to do all the major companies as an independent contractor. Um, that's something that I want to, that I want to hit. Uh, I want to wrestle every day that WrestleMania is in town for Philly. Like I want to have a mat, I want to have matches lined up for all those days. Um, that, that's something that's obviously a part of the fiber goal, but I had to, I have to hit it in 2024. <laughs> uh, in 2020, 2024. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, uh, what else is on there? Oh, act again, do some more acting projects outside of professional wrestling is a part of it too. So it's not all wrestling stuff. It's not all like monetary stuff. It's a lot of creative stuff on there too. Mm, I see. I see. That's, that's great to have that, especially like, especially like if you have those goals in that time frame. it really puts mm-hmm. you, sets yourself into gear and stuff. So yeah, for sure. uh, like even, even with us, with this podcast, we have our certain goals that we want to meet within a specific given time frame. albeit uh, it's a little bit harder for our end but i mean it, it's it's still a goal it still sets goals and it's better to keep that pushing forward and stuff so that's awesome so i saw that you went you were absolute you know you marked out for yourself being the cover of the award that you guys got for the monster factory you definitely <laughs> deserve your flowers there how did that feel overall it was super cool um i saw that they chose the picture which i thought was a really great picture for them to choose and they show for the um, for the presenting of the award. They showed a clip that was primarily my story as well. So the um, the the show head who I, I who texted me after they won, they were like, "We won because of you." Like the UK really likes you. It's a it's it's a United Kingdom based uh, award. And I was like, "Oh, okay." Like obviously it was a joke, but I also kind of felt like maybe I, maybe I was the reason. <laughs> it was really cool because anytime that like we we talk about being award winning, it's my face that like, gets. Chance. yes and it's like it's really cool like it's really the, the, it's so funny because like the statue they're given is like really hideous like it's a really like uh, it's like a someone's face but it's all like it's all deformed looking and weird it's a really ugly trophy but i'm uh, but i'm thankful that we want it <laughs> i mean a trophy is a trophy trophy is a trophy, a trophy dude. man <laughs> <laughs> so let's ask let's talk about it the butt picture okay you you and thunder like i know it probably is annoying but you're you're gonna live on forever because of that she said for the meme meme. for for the the meme meme. (laughs) it's it's solidified how did that feel after you got to actually see that because of course you weren't gonna you know be able to see that as it was happening yeah um well it it gained popularity like well after the match happened and the picture was the picture had been out for a long time yeah um it was a couple months later that it popped off on like some wrestling facebook pages i think is really where it where it started uh and i just remember my cousin who's a big wrestling fan he was like this is you right because like he could tell from my my i have a pizza tattoo on my leg and i was like yeah that's me and then just the story started people were um saying that it was jamie Hayter, and then people would come to my defense like no that's gabby ortiz uh and then thunder rosa was like me and gabby in this picture and then i did a little thing with her on her um her vlog that we talked we talked about it and uh, i just know man i just take it and i roll with it man it's just really cool to like that that my face isn't in it but everyone knows it's me that's crazy and like you um i like that you're that you self coin yourself the silly bitch and therefore you don't take t- nothing too seriously yeah um, right. well, <laughs> it's like and, i ended up getting a huge i got a bigger audience from that than i did the monster factory show mm. like my audience grew exponentially after that after i got everyone was like okay that this is who's in that picture um and then i was able to capitalize on that and i i it's the reason I have this house now. It's the reason I have my car because like I got all these new fans and all these new opportunities and stuff after that picture came out. It was crazy. That is Your life and even, has like, changed. And even yeah. like, yeah. And there's like stories of like, and you've even said on Sam Roberts where it's like, you'll like, you have a shoot job working with lawmakers and stuff. And you say, don't never take it seriously. Like you, you, there, there was one in particular where you joked with a mob boss 
Yeah, so like, he's like a glo- he's so he's a union boss. He's a union oh. leader. But they're like they he behaves like a mob boss and he might as mm-hmm. well just be because the union is basically a mob. And yeah. Like he's a scary rich dude and I couldn't I couldn't care less like if you're not paying my bills, I don't pay you no mind. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's the instances where it's like you had a brother sister joking relationship with Eddie Kingston of all people. Oh yeah, that's my guy. <laughs> like that's yeah. that's insane. I can't even fathom Eddie Kingston being like, yeah, yeah, like cool. They're, like that's insane. Oh, that's me being not. a fan. He's he's not like, oh yeah, cool. He's still Eddie Kingston. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he's but I he's Puerto Rican and Irish, and so am I. And um, one of the first things I told him, looking back, I'm like, what an idiot. Um, I went up to him and I was like, I was like, Eddie, me and you should be in a tag team called the McFreakins. And he looked at me like he wanted to punch me in the face. He was like, <laughs> that's your awesome. And I told a joke. It was like me, him, Homicide, and then like a bunch of other dudes. I think like Santana Ortiz, it was all of us like Puerto Ricans just hanging out. And I'm not gonna say the joke because or or like do the joke, it's a whole thing, but uh he I, I clowned him in front of all of his friends and it was very funny. Gosh. He was very he also at that time looked like he wanted to punch me in the face too. <laughs> but no, Ooh. him and I are him and I are tight. He's a good dude. That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome though. Brave enough to clown Eddie Kingston. Holy shit. What's he gonna do? That's true. Probably punch the- me in the face, but let him let him do it. Bully Ray punched me in the face once, and I survived. So that's wait, so- what? That's a man I can't. I can't <laughs> wait, wait, that, what? Uh, 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 nope, nope. I can't. I nope. Uh-uh. No, it wasn't. It, it wasn't actually. It was. It was at a Ring of Honor seminar, and we were practicing punches. Boom, boom, boom. Him, me and him, one on one on one, and I, I wasn't hitting him either hard enough or in the right spot or anything, and just like snapped me in the place. He just <laughs> gave me a stiff Ooh. one right here, and I was like. Ooh. So I just went and I punched him back. Like it was, it was like equal, equal. It was what it was. It was totally like consensual. Respected. I knew what was happening. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, but if Bull is gonna punch me in the face, and Eddie Kingston can punch me in the face, I'll be okay. <laughs> Respect it. Okay. All right. That's that's cool. Okay. <laughs> that's an interesting story. Damn. What more yeah. do you got? What oh. have you? What are interesting things that you have gotten to do that you don't normally get to talk about? Well, that's one of them. <laughs> Honestly, just like seeing the guys and girls as humans and not like, and not, you know, these larger than life people, which they are 100%, but like seeing them as humans outside of media, nobody there like, like with, with a magnifying glass on them and what they're doing, what they're saying, just seeing them as, as people, because you can um, watch podcasts and listen to podcasts and watch videos of them but they're still on because they're still they're still in the media like this is still something that we're but seeing them just like being silly and like for example like cm punk once i was doing this this i was doing this thing with mjf and we had to wait for like the thingy to come up like the curtain to go up and like i'm waiting and i'm just i'm just sitting there looking waiting for the thing to come up and the thing comes up and it's just cm punk like this right in my face and I'm like, just and I'm just losing my mind because he was so nice. It wasn't like a mean thing. That's it was awesome. just him like pranking us, and that's who like. And so then I see like this narrative that CM Punk is this kind of guy or whatever, but he's actually just like a freaking goofball. All, most almost all of them are probably except maybe like Walter. He's probably not a goofball in real life, but <laughs> most of them are just like cool goofballs. That's Gunther. yeah. Even I called, with him, like, Wal- I called him Walter, didn't I? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I mean. Walter respect is respect is respect at, at the end of the day like i don't want to get hit by him regardless but um <laughs> no like like i like seeing that like behind the curtain there's this whole separate like like and it is true they're there's regular people with regular lives and yeah. wrestling just happens to be their job and and everything but there's still like even for example for like zelina who's a twitch streamer and she does all these jokes prank calling the other wrestlers and stuff you yeah. know and it's it's good to see that humanitarian Adam Cole playing Uno with Xavier Woods and the rest mm-hmm. of them. That's how I became a bigger fan of Adam Cole and stuff like that. And that's insane. But I want to talk about your. I was going through your Insta and you have uh get uh the, your little food review. Uh, your friend suggested the title. What is it? Uh, Good Eats with Gab. I think it was. Yes. I haven't done one of those in a while. 
Yeah, Good Eats with Gab. So yeah. I saw that uh, you tried like the Olipop, and you're a Sprite connoisseur from what I've I seen. Sprite. I love Sprite. Uh, it was horrible. <laughs> I I I tried like I think it was like the pink one and I and I used to work for Coca Cola as a merchandiser so mm. nah nope nope, nope. <laughs> but like there are certain things where you tried out like Popeyes and like mm. uh like the the new sauces from McDonald's mm. and stuff like that uh is there something like have you I saw like recently too I think Arby's released like the Meat Mountain again and it used to be like a secret menu would you try that as or yeah. would you further that i would totally try that i love arby's people clown on arby's all the time i think arby's is really good um they have these like jalapeno poppers that are super yummy there yep. uh and they're chicken tenders like you wouldn't think they're really mm -hmm. good uh i would totally like and i think they just they have a burger on their menu now too that i'd be really interested in trying what is at least one thing that you know for a fact you can accomplish this year uh i want to do street fight this year on a street fight. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah. That's mm, not normally like what anybody says, but all right, cool. What do people normally say? They usually go like, you know, I wanna, I wanna be on a, a like backstage for AEW or. Yeah, I've done that. I want. I want to <laughs> wrestle a certain person on the indies. And I don't think anybody's ever said like, yeah, I blatantly just want to do a street fight. I just want to do. I just want. I want to wrestle in jeans. <laughs> Is that's the sole thing? Just want to wrestle in jeans. Yeah, I, my my, I look really good in jeans. I think it would go. I would think it would get over. Well. I can see it too. It's gonna be like the the jeans and then your shirt where it's the Fallout Boy symbol Hell with the yeah. gap. I appreciate that shirt yes. first Thank and you. foremost. Thank you. I that was my first concert back in 2013. I think when ah. they were doing with like Paramore and stuff yes, like that. The, the the Monumentor. I went to that one five times. <laughs> Damn! Bitch. I went. I went to the one in Albuquerque, and then I saw mm -hmm. them again when they did Boys of Summer with Wiz Khalifa. Wiz Khalifa. Uh -huh. Yeah. So that's insane. But I liked that specific logo because no one, no one really knows. Like I'll, I'll show him a Fallout Boy logo, and it's like you know where this album's from. No, it's it's Save Rock and Roll, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Save Rock yep. and Roll. But yeah. like, oh yeah. Thank you, but thank you for sharing. No, that I <laughs> absolutely. That's that's how I knew. I was like, oh yeah, I, I can I can totally relate to you with all this because like, I used to have that emo phase back too, and we're still going through it. I'm yeah. 28, so I'm just like, ah. And even with like the lyrics that you post in your in your Instagram, like with the thanks for the memories, whenever you mm -hmm. had like your did your A A W post and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's really nice touches and stuff. <laughs> thanks. Fan, and I want to trash on your team for a little bit. So can we do this? All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm stepping out maybe, of this. Maybe I'm, I'm not as much of a wimp as I thought. Oh, I'm you oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, okay. So to be honest, I just love shitting on everybody's teams. I'm an Angels fan, so you can't really hurt me because we already hurt ourselves every yeah. every season. We already got rid of Otani. But I loved the Phillies gear. I will say Thank that. You. I love that the most. Most of the time, like, everybody tries to pay homage to their team, but you got as close as I've ever seen to actually having Phillies-themed, like, legal gear. I thought that was yeah, badass. Yeah, I, I ha it, that's the thing, the legal stuff. Like, I wore the hat, like, the like the, the licensed hat with it. Uh, but those the, – the powder blue and maroon red gear is a gear. Uh, uniform is my favorite. It always has yeah. and always will be. So I, I just needed, and I got that made so quick. I like contact the people. I'm like, just, you don't have to put any logo on it. You don't have to do anything. I just need this color and this color, this style, this way. And then they sent it right away. And I had it for like the next show I was on. Yeah. So it was, it's really cool. And I love that people like it the way that they do, even if they're not Phillies fans. It's, it's like about being a fan of baseball, really, mm -hmm. um, which I am. Like I'll watch any baseball game any day. I can't it's, say it, anything. I'm a Yankees fan. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> nope, it's nope. cool. It's <laughs> nice. Team's trash, but it's great. I thought it was well, fantastic. What team do you like in football? And please don't say the Eagles. because The Eagles. What do you think? I'm from okay. So it is so tough to try and like, you know, since Danny Cage put his like phone number on Twitter, I've been able to, I've been texting with him and I'm like, hey, I really want you on the show. And then... I held my tongue the entire season. I'm a Cowboys fan. I know. It's evil. We don't have to stop the thing yet. Please don't stop the recording. 
I am. I'm in, I'm a Cowboys fan. And so the entire season, Danny Cage has been talking just the most just immense shit he could. I've been up nice about it. I've been calm about it. And then you guys lose to the Buccaneers, which is Chris's team. You yeah, I just threw first. you. Oh, we did. Yeah. It's the same round. It's just 24 <laughs> hours. I'm going to shut up. I'm it's just the shut same up. round. Okay, no matter what. So when that happened, I text him. Or I, yeah, fly, Eagles, fly, right? Did you get a response? Yeah, he called me soft and not a real fan, and he and I was like, "Oh no, I think I made him mad." Nah, you're fine. I'll text but, him. Oh, <laughs> I'll text him. Oh god. But yeah, I was like, "Huh? I wonder how much shit I could talk to her about sports." I wonder. Are you like a hockey fan too, or no? Not particularly. Uh, it's. I mean, all Philly teams, so Flyers. Phillies, Pistons, Sixers, Eagles. Oh, Sixers. Yeah, I was going to say, that's Detroit, my guy. Yeah. My, I'm a bad. I'm a bad. I okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, the soccer is like, I love, I like the Union because they're from Philly and they're, the mascot is a snake with arms and legs. But uh, I really like the the New York Red Bulls is one is probably my, my soccer team of choice. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they were the first soccer game I went to and it was really fun, really exciting. We were in the supporter section, so... Um, that stuck with me. It was a lot of fun. Are you excited that baseball season's right around the corner? We got like so two excited. weeks till I, spring training. I drove past the stadiums today, like on the highway to get somewhere, and the the Megatron was on there, like testing it with like the Phillies mm-hmm. logo and stuff. I was like, it's nice. almost time. <laughs> I, Are you guys- I left. I left my my office job. I I resigned uh, this week, and um, I was looking at Phillies jobs postings just because like I would love to work like my shoot job to be for the Phillies organization that'd be like the coolest thing in the world have you have you like applied for like the social media or anything like that I mean you already have a presence you already yeah, have time yeah so that's the, that was the job that was listed that I applied for today <laughs> I literally applied for that today I mean good hey. luck fingers crossed it's for the Phillies but still <laughs> are you are, are you like an opening Day, have you ever tried to go to like an opening day game or are you just middle of the I've, season? I've tried to, I know ne- I've never been able to because, like, uh, when I used to work for the city, we would get Phillies tickets for like a special box that's that we have for the city of Philadelphia, um, government. And it was always like before spring training oh. started, those tickets were already snatched up. And then they're, they're like, especially the last couple of years, they've been expensive just for opening day. So I go to the middle of the middle of the season. I'm I'm hopefully going to spring training this year. Um, I think my my significant other is has a Valentine's Day present for me that better be spring training tickets. He said he he's been like alluding to it, and if it is, oh my oh, god, shit. I'm so mad if it isn't. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'll just get it myself. I don't care. He doesn't have to come with me. <laughs> oh wow. She was like, that's that's Valentine's Day. That's my gift to myself is I'm going to go. You can stay home. It's <laughs> yes, perfectly fine. No, literally. All right. <laughs> we'll FaceTime <laughs> while I'm there. No, I'm not going to waste my battery on that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I would I, I would neither. If I <laughs> go to a Yankees game, I'm like. I would. <laughs> fuck, man. I know I'll Morgan would be so dad, mad, dude. Cool. Not FaceTime and. No, I'm just kidding. Um, that's that's what you're gonna do. You're just gonna take your dad. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, my 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 boyfriend is um is a is a Marlins fan. What? <laughs> I didn't even know they existed before I met him. <laughs> I was like a Marlins wow. fan, and then before before him, I used to date a Mets fan. So that was. Oh, that was that must have been great. Oh my that god, we were at each throats. All the time. A Marlins fan. Is he? F- yeah. Is he from Florida? He's from Westchester, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Westchester Bams place. So okay. Yeah. yeah, Bams place. Yeah. Yeah, Bams place. Okay. All right. That's cool. Landlocked and liking the fish team. All right. That's great. He said when they won in twenty in two thousand three, like really stuck with him. Okay. Was, All like, right. Is he like hold on watched. to a championship as long as you can? <laughs> yeah, I guess. It, years. Is he around our age? Because then he would have been like five or six. No, he was. He's twenty five. I don't know how he remembers it. I don't know what. I don't know. 
it's a mystery to me. And you know what they say? Like when they're like when they're when they're cheering each other on, they say go fish. Ew. Go, go fish. fish. <laughs> yeah. I can't, Why? I I can't talk shit. We have a trout farm at the Angel Stadium, so I can't even talk shit. I can't oh, yeah. say anything on that because of Mike Trout. So I can't say if I can't say a damn thing about that. Well, can I say something about Mike Trout? No, please. Please don't. Don't you dare. Don't do you it. say it. You, don't you, do you, it. Don't. I give you. Don't I do it. 40, I, I know what you're going to say, and it already breaks podcast. my heart. No, I don't, I'm not going to say it. It's fine. It's fine. We can move on. <laughs> she was going to say she was going to say he lives in Philadelphia, and he's a huge Eagles fan. I know. It breaks my heart every time that <laughs> the Cowboys go to Philadelphia. He's always there. It sucks. Even my own team hates me. Like, how, how does that feel? My imagine. the angels. Oh my god! All right, <laughs> I'm depressed now. Chris, you can go. It it you're good, dude. Okay. Just... I had I wanted to do this little segment here. Uh, how long have you been a Fallout Boy fan for? Um, since I was 11, 12 years old. So eleven. So oh, would god. you know, would you have a pretty extensive? knowledge of kind of like their albums and stuff like that yeah 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 okay so i want to list off as as some like you myself and you would know Fall Out boy in about fall a do era like or un from under the cork tree era they were known for making pretty long titles yeah in their music so i want to try and list off see if you can tell which ones are uh fall Out boy songs and which ones are not okay. okay yep so lyrics is the most fun a girl can have that's panic at the disco okay that's she's got that one right uh i slept with someone with that's a fall boy song okay i slept but with damn. someone in fall boy and all i got was the shitty song written about me yeah. yes <laughs> uh let's see here champagne for my real friends real that's pain for my song. well this Bro, she is friend. sniping you, dude. <laughs> God. Uh, She's sniping you. Get busy living or get busy dying. Damn it. Damn it. Okay, you killed it. <laughs> you killed it. Uh, what happened switch there? Places. <laughs> it switched places, dude. <laughs> oh, now you put me on the you put me on the spot. You're on the That's spot. Awesome. Okay, so now this is the second half where my co-host Gabby Ortiz <laughs> we interview Chris about Fallout Boy. Okay, okay, Chris, okay. did you really think you were gonna get me with that? Really? Uh, you know, some people like Brooke Havoc said that they were emo punk fans, so they she didn't wasn't able to list all the um a day to remember albums, unfortunately. So. <laughs> So I'm okay, I'm gonna list all the Fall Boy albums right here, right now. Okay, so oh, you didn't ask me. I'm gonna do it. Okay, living that's out fine. with your girlfriend. People don't really know about that one. That was their official first album. Take this to your grave. Mm -hmm. From under the cork tree, my mm -hmm. heart will always be on the B side of my tongue. People don't know it's an EP. Um, and then there was Infinity on High. Mm -hmm. Then you had Folly I Do. Mm -hmm. Then you had The Believers Never Die Part One, their best hits. Mm -hmm. And then you have um, Save Rock and Roll, and yes. then Pack Sam Days, which is another punk rock EP that they put out. Uh, Save Rock and Roll, and then there was Mania. Mm -hmm. I'm missing one: American Beauty, American Psycho. And then okay. after, so it was American Beauty, American Psycho, Mania, and then uh, I think Believers Never Die Part Two came out between one of those records, and mm -hmm. then um, So Much for Stardust, their new one. Okay. Uh, you forgot the Live in Phoenix live album. I never listened to that <laughs> uh, one. I don't. I don't like live albums that much. But that is one. <laughs> You're yep. right. But other <laughs> than that, that she got pretty much everything else. Uh, <laughs> good job. Thank you. <laughs> you didn't ask for that. <laughs> I'm so surprised that she literally put you in your place, dude. Yeah. The, the yeah. Software switched because of how much uh, she got you. Yeah. So. No, I, I I I sit here defeated, unfortunately. So this will be the first time in the year that that happens, unfortunately. <laughs> Can I also say, dude, like when you asked her these, you only asked her four, and one of them was a different band. Well, well, yes, but like Panic is also one of them. Attack Attack is also another one that has long ass songs. 
long ass song titles. Say anything has long ass song titles. Uh, long ass records. They're one record long ass 27 records. Song, Twenty seven songs long. <laughs> yeah. So so like uh, there was a whole list, but there was no way. There was no way. <laughs> she already made you tap out just from yeah four. i was surrender <laughs> surrender let's get a little bit into like you know you wanting to act and do all that where do you what role would you see yourself be drama um, horror thriller comedy i have always so i um this is like a thing that i've always wanted to do so there's zatanna she's a character from the superman and like batman she's a dc character and she's, she's like the magic a uh, magician's yeah. daughter, isn't? It? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I've always envisioned her. Like, if we're gonna get make it for like modern times and make it a little bit more like woke, I guess could you would say. Like, I would love to see Zatanna as like a brujeria, like a like a Spanish witch, but like doing like magician stuff as like a side job. But her real thing is like she's like a legit witch, and like I would mm. love to see something like that happen. That'd be so cool, and I would love to play that. That'd be like my dream. That doesn't even exist. I would love to do it though. <laughs> Be so awesome. for anybody who's wondering, oh man, that is way too bright. <laughs> for anybody who's wondering what whose antenna is, that's the antenna. Yeah. Okay. I can see that'd it. be kind of cool. Nobody's just, ever said like they wanted to be a hero or an yeah. anti. On top of the yeah, fact that it's antenna, yeah, like there hasn't been like a real good adaption other than like cartoons no. and stuff. So no, she and she did like Smallville. I think they had like. Mm -hmm her in there but no there hasn't been like a, a, a like movie studio version of her nope but that would be super cool that's pretty cool so there's is there anything else you wouldn't want to do i could see you in a lot of dramas oh uh, yeah i mean totally i would totally do a drama um but the funny thing is like i don't like watch dramas in my like free time i actually try to avoid them as much as possible um the last drama i watched was killers of the flower moon which was like ah, it was amazing but uh, I like comedy. Like I would love to to do a comedy movie, like a, like a Judd like a Judd Apatow, <laughs> or even like even like a shitty like Adam Sandler film. I would do like oh Adam Sandler films are not shitty. No, yeah, so, where okay. where <laughs> I have one that's really shitty, and he's not in it, but he produced it. It's called The Wrong Missy, and it's with David Spade. It's terrible. It's on Netflix. If you want to watch it, like hmm. let me know what you think. I have it's to so, look into that one. Yeah. It's so bad. Like, I felt like I I was watching it, and I'm like, I can't do this. Like, I was watching it with my boyfriend at the time. I'm like, I can't watch this movie. It's terrible. We turned it off halfway through. We both woke up that morning like, we have to finish that movie. Like, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad, we have to see it through. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we all have that, though. We all have those moments. Yeah. TV shows, anime, anything like that. It gets yeah. bad, or it's just like our curiosity gets to us. Uh, I'm invested too much time into this. I have to. Yes. This. <laughs> That's you with One Piece, bro. Oh. That's you with 100%. I, 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 I've already been like, okay, if y'all didn't even start it when it was on like four kids' TV at the time, uh, just just go on. Don't, don't waste your time on 800 or even 1,000 episodes of it. No, don't. Yeah, I had a when I was in Japan. Um, one of our one of my roommates was a big One Piece fan, and there was a uh, there was like a small One Piece amusement park right by the Tokyo Dome. That's it's like, insane. It's, it's dude, it's so sick. And like I'm there, and I'm loving it. I'm loving the aesthetics. I love everything about it and stuff. This was in 2017, I think. Yeah, it's 2017, and I'm like, I'm gonna get into One Piece. And then I saw what it was. I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> There's no way. It's an awesome story, but you have to be committed. You had to have been there yeah. day one. And even I didn't start at day one. I started like 200 chapters in. I yes. read the stuff. So I was like, nope, nope. Was there anything else in Japan that, that piqued your interest and stuff? Attack I know there was a studio. Titan was another Ooh, one that they had a lot of one. like, Ooh. yeah, yeah. But I just like, I, it was too scary. Oh, <laughs> uh, what about the studio? Don't they, did they have the studio Ghibli like? Yeah, Disneyland yeah, I was already thing. into that. So, like, I'd already yeah. watched all, all those, like, Ponyo mm. and, you know, Kiki's Delivery Service, all those ones. Nice, nice. What scared you about Attack on Titan? Is it the gore? Or is it what so, they look like? It's it's what they look like when they, the Tokyo Sky Tree, which is, like, this, it's, like, the Space Needle in Seattle, but it's, like, I think it's, a, I think it's quite bigger. And um, I went there when I was there, and I, we went all the way up. So, as you go up, you stop on the floors to see, like, what they have, and, like, we got and there was a whole attack on titan theme that they were doing and the whole thing every time we'd go off of the elevator you would see a screen and it'd be those fucking guys 
like attacking the sky tree. We were in it. Like, oh, <laughs> like terrifying. There was so then so we got off on one floor and then you open it and it's just there. The one guy's like big ass face, just like greeting you. I was, it was so scary. I was like, I, I would love <laughs> to see what this is about, but I'm traumatized. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Did you bring yourself to eat any of the exotic food? Like I know yeah. a previous guest on here had horse meat and this guy uh, was appalled by that did you ever try horse meat over there i never tried horse meat i would try human meat before i tried horse meat i would oh uh, hold up wait Horses a minute are let's so innocent <laughs> why so you, you would eat the mailman before you ate a horse he was a willing participant sure <laughs> based oh, based that, i would not say that it, i would <laughs> not or not at all <laughs> what is one weird thing that you are okay that you desperately want to try around the world like, what's one thing you've seen online and you're like, I need to try that? Like a food? Yeah, like frog legs. Um, I mean, I'm going to try alligator. Alligator? Yeah. Okay. You can, get that, you can get that in Florida, right? Like, they just have that. Yeah. That. Yeah, I would try that. Um, I don't desperately need to try it. Uh, I honestly, like, I, I might try anything, but, like, I can't think of any specific weird thing that I would try. But I'd be, but I'd be willing. Maybe? That's actually good. That's good. Rabbit? Is that what you said? No, no rattlesnake. Rattle snake. Rattlesnake. I would totally try rattlesnake. Sure. It's good. I can't. I I watched uh back when I was in when I was super young camping out in the desert as most New Mexicans do, I guess. <laughs> uh, my uncle at the time had caught one, beheaded it, and cooked it, and it was still moving. I could never. I I I couldn't trauma traumatized mm -hmm. from it yeah i bet i love snakes too i had a pet snake and i i would i would still try one i might not okay all right that's not a bad <laughs> answer alligator hmm all right yeah You're just gonna have to go down to florida and try it out do you ever see water boy that movie water boy <laughs> yeah you know how she has like the little alligator like on a, you, do you remember that part? yeah yeah, I would like go into it like that. That'd be cool. <laughs> That's awesome. That and I think you can have like shark down in Florida too. Yeah, I want to try that. That would be that'd be pretty cool. Maybe a seahorse or something like that. So as we begin to wind down, where can everybody get a hold of you? Like, where can everybody see your content? All of um, that. you can find me on mostly uh, Twitter and Instagram at Gabity G A B B I T Y, and all of my like auxiliary stuff is on there you can you can easily get a hold of me and if you want to book me gabby ortiz bookings at gmail.com okay so final question what do you want your legacy to be not just in wrestling but you as a person what do you want to uh, be remembered I, for i just want to be remembered for someone that's like super non-judgmental someone you can come to and just like you can tell me anything and i will not look at you sideways i will not judge you for that even things i don't necessarily agree with uh i just want to be someone that like people are able to open up to and just be real with uh, all my friends all my family even my fans too and being on podcasts like this just talking you know even if it's ridiculous stuff just like being able to talk about it and have fun with it i just want to be someone that people feel safe with in the ring and outside of the ring aside from those who drink starry <laughs> yeah they can go to drink hell <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I will who judge you story. for that. I will judge you for that. And also, yeah. I might judge you for being a Marlins fan, but I am dating someone who's a Marlins fan, so I can't. I'm who am I to judge? <laughs> honestly, right? <laughs> or eating people instead of horses. Hopefully, that you never. You're not the last person during the apocalypse. I'm. That's the only thing I'm ever gonna remember now. Even if we go watch you one day. I'm just going to bring, like, she'll choose you. She'll protect the horse over you. That's the sign that I'll make so you know it's us. Yeah. I, You know, and I see that, and I'll know it's you, and I will give you a big, blow you a big kiss because you remember uh, me for being a cannibal. A, a cannibal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's All right. funny. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching this episode. Hopefully, we did not scar you. Hopefully, you did hopefully not we get. Did. <laughs> hopefully, we did scar you. I guess. Hopefully, you didn't get offended by all the Philly shit talk. Hopefully, you did. Whichever way this goes, you know how to get a hold of us on our YouTube channel at Downtime in the Ring, and we will see y'all in the next. Hashtag episode. humans before horses. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck, dude? <laughs>